gardeners welcome back to my channel so in today's video I wanted to talk about snakes that would be great for intermediate keepers because a lot of the times we talk about the beginner snakes and I feel it's time to talk about the intermediates if you're interested in getting into a larger or a little bit more difficult snake just a little disclaimer before I start this entire video there aren't like official levels that you need to pass in order to keep certain snakes you can go to any store any breeder and just buy a snake right off the bat. But there are reasons that I label some snakes as beginners and intermediates just as a little format for people to follow just to make sure that they're picking out the right snake for them and it's something that they think that they're willing to do and something that they can handle because there are a lot of different snakes and there are a lot of different things that go into them and a lot of them have different issues so all of it is just things to consider before getting a snake and making sure that it's the right fit for you. I personally started off with a snake that I'm going to mention as intermediate and I never had an issue. So if you have the knowledge and you're capable of taking care of a snake and you aren't worried about the size or anything like that, then you can go all out and get a big snake right off the bat. It's totally up to you. Just want you guys to make responsible decisions and end up with a snake that's going to be a great fit for you and make sure that you can provide it a great home as well. So as you can see, I have Vendetta here. He is my boa constrictor and he is an amazing snake and I think that he is a great option for intermediate keepers. The reason I would classify boa constrictors as an intermediate snake is simply just because of their size. So Vendetta here is obviously still a juvenile. He is going to be a year very soon um, and he's grown quite a lot in that time as you can see. He's definitely getting pretty thick. Um, so as you can see, like he's stunning. He never wants to show his face though. We want to see your face. Boa constrictors usually are between six and 10 feet as they get older and they are very, very heavy bodied snakes. So just because of that, I would label them as intermediate. Just because somebody that may be starting with reptiles and hasn't had any experience with them whatsoever, it's not the best idea for them to just go all out and get a boa constrictor just because they don't really know what they may be getting into. So, I mean, as long as they're doing the research, maybe they're very passionate about boa constrictors and they know everything that goes into it and they think it would be a great fit for them, then go for it. But usually it's not really the case and I would say that they're an intermediate snake for sure just because of that size. However, when it does come to caring for boa constrictors, they're actually very, very easy to take care of. Um, they're great eaters. They have great personalities. They're very laid back. The babies can be a little nippy, but honestly, it's like that for most baby snakes because they're still afraid of everything. You're basically just a big predator to them and they're just trying to keep themselves safe. So it's just a survival instinct that they have. Um, but they are very laid back in time as they grow and get larger and they're very slow moving, which I really appreciate about boa constrictors. A lot of people feed these guys large rats or even small rabbits. So that's something to keep in mind because a lot of people may not be comfortable with that. And because they are gonna get so big, you're gonna have to keep in mind that they're going to need a large enclosure as well. So they are going to be taking up quite a bit of space. Um, the minimum for a boa constrictor is a 4x2x2. By two by two. Honestly, I would recommend to go a little bit bigger, especially if you have an adult. I'm still figuring out what I'm going to do for this guy because he's growing, obviously, and I'm going to want to upgrade him when he's an adult. Um, he does have a 4x2x2 by two by two right now, and it's adequate for him, and it's amazing. It's very spacious, but obviously he's going to be huge one day, so I'm going to want to get him an even larger enclosure than that. So I hope this gave you a better idea about boa constrictors because I think that they can be amazing snakes for people that have the knowledge and experience and basically are just willing to take on a very hefty snake because they do get quite large and that's something to keep in mind because it's going to be a snake that's going to be with you for like 30 years so you're going to want to make sure that you can properly give them the right home that they need and take care of them and give them an amazing life so the next snake that i would recommend as an intermediate snake i'm going to get a lot of hate for this one but it's my personal opinion and i think that ball pythons are actually intermediate snakes so ball pythons are extremely common and a lot of people actually say that they are like the number one beginner snake to have and I personally just don't agree with that because ball pythons can be pretty difficult to take care of. 
Um, a lot of the times it just has to do with them being picky eaters because a lot of the time beginners don't really know how to deal with that and it can be very stressful for them and they don't understand like when it's time to go to a vet and it's just kind of a weird situation so I feel like it makes it difficult and that is why I think that ball pythons are more for intermediate keepers. Ball pythons are very docile animals, however the babies can be very nippy and I feel like I have bad ball python juju or something but I'm always getting struck at by ball pythons but my ball python is an angel and would never strike at me so I've just been lucky but um because I literally hated ball pythons for like years because I thought they were like the devil but I have come around. I love ball pythons now, but I still think that they are more for intermediate um, keepers just because they can be a little bit difficult when it comes to feeding. A lot of the times they will just go off of feeding. You may have to put them on live. A lot of the time beginners won't understand and they might think, oh, it's normal for ball pythons to go off of feedings and they may not like check their weight and if they start losing weight, they could have parasites and issues and need to see a vet. So it can be very challenging for beginners to get a hold on understanding these snakes and how to properly care for them because they can be very, very, very picky. A lot of the times ball pythons are bred in high numbers and they are not socialized and they are kept in tubs or racking systems. And then a lot of people take them home and put them in a tank and then they're extremely stressed out and they don't know how to deal with it. And then the snake doesn't eat. So it's just, there's a lot that goes into it with ball pythons. Every situation is a little bit different, but it's just there, there tends to be a lot of issues when it comes to keeping ball pythons especially for beginners. So because of all of that drama, I would say that they're more for an intermediate keeper because an intermediate keeper tends to have a little bit more knowledge and experience and will know how to handle those situations better and it will result in a happier and healthier snake. So I personally just don't think that they're the best for beginners. I'm sorry, but I think they're great snakes. I absolutely love them. So here's Chaos. There's a little close up of him because he is so cute. I love this snake so much. So yeah, I would say he's great for intermediate keepers if you're looking into getting a new snake. Um, I think that ball pythons are such a great size too. They're usually five to six feet. They don't get as like thick as like nearly as like a boa constrictor or anything, but they are a little bit heavy bodied snakes more than like a colubrid. They're basically like having like a mini big snake, if that makes any sense but they're just gorgeous. They come in so many different morphs and colors and they're obviously very interesting. People love them, they're extremely popular. So yeah, great intermediate snake. The last snake that I wanna talk about today that's a great intermediate snake is actually Bowie here. So Bowie is a Brazilian rainbow boa and Bowie was actually my very first snake that I had ever gotten. So, and obviously I'm saying that they're more for an intermediate keeper and I'm going to talk exactly why I say that. So Brazilian rainbow boas can be pretty difficult to take care of and that is simply because of one reason and that is humidity. Especially if you're keeping a baby because they need 80 to 100% humidity and that is extremely high and it can be kind of difficult to maintain but there are tricks around it and if you do it the right way then you're going to have a very healthy and happy snake. But for people that don't understand humidity, that can be very, very critical and can cause your snake to die if you don't do it the right way. As your snake gets bigger, the humidity level will go down in time. They'll need more of like a 70% humidity, which is still pretty high, but it's easier to maintain than 80 to 100%. But it's just very important because the babies can get dehydrated and they can die, so you don't want that to happen. So it's just really something that you need to pay attention to and make sure that you're doing correctly. So a lot of beginners, again, are going to have a very hard time with that, especially for a snake that really, really needs that high humidity. And that's why I would say that they're more for an intermediate keeper because the keeper needs to have knowledge of humidity and know how to accommodate that for the snake. Other than that, I think that Brazilian rainbow boas are so easy to take care of and they are like the best snakes ever. Honestly, if I had to choose a favorite, and I know I say boa constrictors are my favorite snakes, but like I just, Bowie is my baby. Bowie was my very first snake. Bowie is what got me over my fear of snakes. And I've just completely fallen in love with snakes because of Bowie. Um, so Brazilian rainbow boas are known to be just complete sweethearts. 
but that couldn't be further from the truth for the babies. The babies, once they come out, they are like little pistols and they will just bite and bite and bite. It's a defense, it's instincts, they're trying to protect themselves. But with handling, they will tame down very quickly. They will understand handling. They will not see you as a threat anymore. And once that happens, they are just the sweetest snakes. Like everyone I talk to who owns a Brazilian rainbow boa, they can't go on and on enough about how sweet they are, how gentle. They're pretty slow moving too. They are always on the move, but they're again boas, so they're gonna be moving very slowly. And I find it very relaxing, and that's just what I prefer. I'm like not a colubrid person because I don't like spastic, fast moving things. I like really slow and relaxing things. So boas are just my cup of tea. So Brazilian rainbow boas are gonna get five to six feet. Bowie here is pretty much like getting very close to full grown right now. Um, she will get a little bit thicker and I can't really tell how long she, everyone always asks me how long my snakes are and I do not measure them and I am like so bad at guessing. I have no clue because as you can see, she's just like always wrapped around me and always moving. So I don't really know how long you are. So you can kind of see from this video, but I don't know. I Maybe one day I'll just sit down and really try to measure my snakes, but so far that has never happened. But they don't get as big as boa constrictors, obviously. They are not as thick. They do get pretty much... Um, the thickness I would compare is similar to like a ball python. Um, it's not, I don't know, some ball pythons get thicker, honestly. It's kind of a weird thing to compare to other snakes because they're just so unique and so different. Like their bodies and everything is just a little bit different. They're just very unique animals. Um, but Bowie here is almost full grown, so you can kind of get a good idea. I think that it's a pretty good sized snake. I think that a four by two by one is actually perfect for Brazilian rainbow boas. Um, it's very, very spacious for her and it will be perfect for her entire adult life. So that is what I would recommend for a Brazilian rainbow boa. And if that's something that you're willing to accommodate and you want to get into a new, cool, bigger snake that has a little bit more of a challenge when taking care of it, a Brazilian rainbow boa would be an amazing option for you. So those are just three snakes that I think are great for intermediate keepers. Again, I'm not saying that there is a level of snakes that you need to go through in order to get to the top. If this is an intermediate snake, I'm not saying you have to buy a corn snake before you get a Brazilian rainbow boa. It doesn't work like that. You guys have free will. You can get whatever you want. I'm just going off of what I think is best for beginners and intermediate. Everyone is going to be different. Everyone has a different set of knowledge and experience and even desire to own these animals. If you have a passion and you really want a certain type of snake, then I guarantee you'll make it happen and you will do the research and you'll be a great owner and provide an amazing home for your snake. I'm just going off of general basics of what I've seen from keepers when it comes to beginners and intermediate level and what I think these animals require to make sure that they end up in the best home possible. It's our job to make sure that these snakes will properly fit into our own lifestyles. So I hope that this video was helpful. Please leave a comment. Let me know what you think. If you disagree, please leave it in a comment. I'd love to chat with you guys about it. And if you guys think that there are any other great intermediate snakes for people that already have some basic knowledge of snake keeping and they want to get something bigger and cooler and just more interesting, please leave it in a comment because I want to hear what you guys have to say. So thank you guys again so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.